Brian Josephson. Um, uh, well, two points I want to make. First of all, the evidence for God. I would uh, uh, see it, and of course this is all personal, more as a matter of um, inner experience, interpreting what one experiences than in the outside world. Uh, the other point was I actually joined in the blog uh, after Colin Blakemore's um, uh, article in The Guardian. Um, I, um, so I, I made a title, uh, is, uh, is Science Just Two Steps Away From Supporting Religion? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my argument, it uh, follows uh, a little bit uh, what the uh, panel members have said, is that um, we're moving towards understanding higher order organization uh, as containing essential points. And uh, I think if we understand that self-organization properly, we will see uh, a very different side to mm. nature, one which can um, include subtleties that uh, are not normally um, considered valid. So that may not necessarily uh, prove God or anything, but it will, it will move in things in the right direction. Yeah. If I understand it right from what I've heard, and I haven't had a chance to read your book, what you're really defending against atheism and materialistic metaphysics completely is agnosticism rather than theism. Because, and it's interesting, that agnostics doesn't, doesn't appear in the, in the index of your book at all. And I assume that was because the whole book was essentially a plea for agnosticism rather than for theism. I and you yourselves have talked extensively about the uncertainty of these, the, the cases that you could make one way or the other here. Would I be right in assuming that that's the real thesis behind the book, <coughs> namely a defense of true agnosticism? Well, it's an ingenious suggestion, but I'm afraid I can't, I can't accept it. Uh, um, let me first comment on Brian's, Brian's remark. Of course, experience is, 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 is important and, and, and an element in, 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 in the matter. And, the research of people like Alistair Hardy and his successors show that some forms of spiritual experience not necessarily contained within the understanding of, of historic religious traditions are, are surprisingly widespread in, in, in the, in the um, population and I think are to be taken with absolute seriousness. It's a complicated matter to, to discuss and so on. Uh, and, and, and that's really all I think I can say the sort of short time we have this evening. No, the book is not, it's not, a, it's not, a, not a plea for agnosticism. Um, I mean, I, 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 of course there are things of which we are ignorant in science and in and religion and anything in between, and we shouldn't pretend to knowledge that we don't possess. But equally, I think we should not refuse insights and, and, and well-motivated uh, understandings that, that, are, that are given to us. There is, of course, in theology, particularly in, in, in Christian theology of the Eastern branch of the church, a strong tradition of what's called apophatic theology, which emphasizes the mystery of God, uh, that God is not going to be caught, the infinite God is not going to be caught in our, in our uh, rational nets in, in that sort of way. And, and it is, it's, uh, some people in that tradition go as far as to say that we can know what God is not, but not God, what God is. Um, of course you have to be careful, but I, I think it is, it is not helpful to refuse insight and knowledge as we feel it comes to us. And I certainly don't think we're simply lost in some sort of agnostic fog. You raised the question of the nothing but a bit ago. It seems to me that um, this is much more often a characteristic of religions, of religious people, this stating that there is nothing but. Especially, of course, there is nothing but God. Um, but the, another point. I value religious concepts very much and, the, and have my own concept of, and experience of God. Um, and I know that there are lots of people all over the world who have experiences of God and they have concepts of God. But I have always failed to understand how that translates into the objective existence of one of those concepts. Of course, mine it would always be. And that seems to me to be a complete non sequitur and also something which is quite dangerous. I think it depends on whether you imagine that your concept of God has sort of caught God in a box. That's extremely dangerous. The technical term for it in theology, of course, is idolatry. 
and it is regarded as one of the most serious <coughs> of the Ten Commandments, that there's a very cogent sounding chap who's writing a book on why the Ten Commandments just make so much sense from a biological and, and sort of how you want to organise society view. And the fact is that idolatry of any form, essentially what I would say the form you were describing, is extremely dangerous. On the other hand, if you're prepared to entertain the hypothesis that there is a loving ultimate creator, which we believe we can show is reasonable whether you whether, whether one thinks it's correct or not, then it's fairly clear that a loving ultimate creator will not be incompetent. Therefore, it's likely that you know, if you're loving someone, you will wish to communicate with them in some way, but if you want to give them the freedom, you will not communicate them in a way which is zap, lightning, signed God. You have no choice. You have to believe. You have to do it. And therefore, this rather subtle situation in which a lot of people feel that they've got communication from God that there are bodies of knowledge or understanding about God which people can share, but all the wise ones say, this is not the whole story. You cannot put God in a box. Seems to be perfectly plausible. What would be very dangerous if anyone thought their concept was something to go around hitting other people over the head with in a distracted way. That happens, but then, you know, that just says that humans are fallible. Am I allowed one sentence of response to that? Indeed. Throughout that answer, you have objectified God. Throughout it, right from the beginning. You've so fallen I, straight I, into the trap I that I was talking about. A little bit. Yeah. First of all, I, I, of course, nothing buttery can pop up anywhere. Uh, I don't think too many people will say nothing but God. I suppose a pantheist, of course, would say that, but that's, uh, that's it. I mean, certainly the Abrahamic faiths have always insisted that there is, that, that through, that there is more than God, there is creator mm. and creation. And, wish to preserve the distinction between the two. As for objective, objective, I mean, I don't, wouldn't have an objective view of somebody as a person, if I really knew them as a person. I wouldn't wish to use the word objective about it. I'd wish to use some much more subtle word uh, about it. And again, I don't know what, exactly what you mean by objective God, but if you mean that God is something that you can, um, you've caught in your nets, as Nicholas was saying, uh, of course we don't believe, don't believe in that. And I go back to what I said about the warnings of apophatic theology. Theology has never believed that God is objective in some unquestionable, unequiv um, unequivocal sense. 